In this video, I'm going to explain why lighting is the most important thing about your photography and how any beginner can use it to their advantage. I live in the middle of nowhere Saskatchewan and I'm one of the more popular photographers in all of Western Canada. And I'm not popular because I have expensive equipment or know how to use the advanced features on my camera or that I do heavy editing. The biggest reason for my success is because of my lighting and composition. And anybody can do this with the camera they already own. The word photography itself means capturing the light. So that means whatever you want to shoot, you want to show it in the best lighting possible. For beginners, this means don't waste good lighting. Sunrises, sunsets, foggy days. In particular, I love shooting when it's really cloudy out. But back in the old days, like 10, 15 years ago, I was a fair weather photographer. I liked shooting when it was sunny and warm. And there is a time to shoot when it's sunny and warm. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you find a really cool subject you want to shoot, and you can shoot it when the lighting looks better, your pictures will stand out more. One of the advantages of this is that when you look at your weather forecast, and it says, tomorrow's going to be crappy weather, and the next day, and the next day. When you're a photographer who shoots for lighting, you kind of get excited by those kind of forecasts. I photograph this abandoned house near my town all the time. Here's a technically perfect image in the middle of the day. It still looks fine. But now let's check it out at sunset, or when it's cloudy, or in the middle of the night. You'll probably have noticed that the lighting conditions changes the image. I get an awful lot of credit for Mother Nature's glory. And it just so happens that in Southwest Saskatchewan, we get a lot of world-class lighting because of our weather. Even with my portraits, that's why I prefer doing photo shoots either when there's clouds or at the end of day. My friend wanted a photo shoot in her wedding dress. If we would have shot this picture at noon, the sun would be coming through that window. It would look horrible. But near the end of the day, when the sun's on the other side of this house, the light comes through that window perfectly. The camera settings are rather simple. If you've taken my entire beginner photography series, you know this is single point focus, aperture mode with exposure compensation. It's the lighting that makes it look good. One of the more popular questions I get on Facebook and Instagram is, what camera settings did you use for this picture? If I gave them my camera settings and they shot with different lighting, it still won't look as good. And sometimes you're going to get rewarded with perfect lighting, like my friend Lacey here. This was an end of day photo shoot when the clouds diffused the lighting just perfectly. Do you see how even the lighting is? If we would have shot this at one in the afternoon, there would have been heavy shadows under the hat some of the grass would be overexposed. There would be three to four stops of light difference between the darks and the brights. So when you look at other pictures and you find that you really like them a lot, ask yourself if you like the photo because of the ISO settings or because of the lighting. Chances are very good, it's the lighting. When you combine good lighting with composition, and we'll cover that in the next video, you're gonna have a very satisfying experience and your pictures will look absolutely amazing. There are a lot of people who take their photos and put them in Photoshop to make them look more moody. What they're changing in those images is the lighting and probably the composition. There's nothing wrong with Photoshopping. However, some photographers like myself prefer not to. I let Mother Nature do all the work so I don't have to do it at home. And when you do have to shoot in summer in the afternoon, all you have to do is be aware of direction of lighting. There's a lot of great color in summer, so it's a great time to shoot but even more so if you happen to get a good thunderstorm. Here's a picture of our grain elevators here in Shaunavan. A lot of people think I'm a really good photographer because of this picture, but anybody would have gotten the same picture that was with me. I purposely went and waited here because I knew a storm was coming. This was shot with a mid aperture with default autofocus. The camera settings weren't that difficult. It was the timing. I endured a half an hour of strong winds and mosquitoes to get this shot. And when you're a winter photographer with great lighting, for some reason people think you're a super good photographer. I'm not a super good photographer, I'm just cold. 
And that is really just a difference between me and other photographers who shoot the same subjects. I'm willing to go out when the weather is not comfortable. Your camera settings are important, but remember you're using your camera settings to capture the light, so the lighting is more important. I will be creating some more advanced videos about lighting in the future. I've already made one called Painting with Light for doing night photography with a flashlight. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about this video, please leave it in the comment section below and I will respond. And here is a tip from my wife. If you are going to be a winter photographer shooting for good light, make sure you have a shovel or roadside assistance. Chances are very good you're going to get stuck every once in a while. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video.